With the pressure already visible at voters' registration centers, it becomes difficult for civil servants to meet up given their official engagement from Mondays to Friday since by close of work at 4 o'clock in the evening, the centers are no longer operational. Some of the civil servants who spoke with NTA News say it has been challenging for updating their PVC and relocation to the area close to where they will vote. I think our state should also emulate that. is to give civil servants some of that benefit of that and give them at least two, three days so that they can go and then get their PVC because it is very important. That is our tool. I am a civil servant, to a public servant, a businessman. We need to register. I feel that uh, the state government too should do the same thing so that uh, it creates avenues for civil servants to go out and get their PV. What is worth doing is worth doing well. Uh, we, it is the duty of every government to encourage the citizens to come out, either by way of sensitization. And the best way the government can encourage people, especially those in the civil service, is to maybe declare a kind of public holidays so that people will have enough time to go out and register for, for this PVC. However, the head of civil service in Cross River State, Chief Timothy Ogbang Akwaji, says if the INEC did not extend the registration exercise, most civil servants in the state will be given opportunity to register. If there is pressure for more persons to go and do registration, we may get to a point where we also ask government you know, to give a approval. Maybe take a day or two days for those who have not registered to also formalize their registration. Why? Because uh, Cross River State Government takes the you know, uh, next year's election very, very important. We want a situation where our people will begin to understand you know, how important it is to exercise their civic responsibilities. The civil servants in the state, however, appeal to the Independent National Electoral Commission to extend the PVC registration exercise at least by two months. In Calabar, Ode Aleño, NTA News. And to further promote the nation's democratic system ahead of 2023 general elections, concerned Nigerians are advocating intense voters' education to provide citizens with requisite information and electoral provisions to reduce voters' apathy. Uta Etum completes the story. Voter education has to do with providing citizens with basic information about their participation in elections. It aims to acquaint the electorate with the basic concepts of democracy, thereby encouraging them to vote and make informed decisions during the elections. With the newly introduced technologies by INIC, such as voter enrollment device, online registration and other innovation, 
The need to educate citizens and supporters of political parties, stakeholders say is apt, especially as 2023 general elections draw near. It is absolutely imperative or important that uh, INEC will embark on aggressive voters' education, you know, especially in the rural communities. They can engage the teachers in primary and secondary schools you know, to help them because I know that they do not have the necessary uh, capacity or resources to do this exclusively. INEC may not be able to go all out into the new cancanis of the communities. That's why they need to engage some stakeholders like faith-based organizations, churches, mosques, and even town criers to get to the root of the basic uh, foundation where the citizens, mostly in the rural areas, can be found. For others, proper enlightenment on the entire electoral process will increase voter turnout and encourage participation during elections. issue of this online registration, a lot of Nigerians are not... Uh, online, most especially the farmers, the Okada riders. So what you need to do is to take the registration back to the various wards for them to register. Those polling units, most especially the newly created polling unit. They, however, advocated for massive voter education by civil society and political parties to help citizens to promote democratic values in the country. In Calabar, Uduak Etam. NTN News. The Inspector General of Police, Osman Al Kalibaba, has applauded the electorate in Ekite State for cooperating with police force and other security agencies during the governorship election in the state. The report is here presented from us today. A statement by the first public relations officer, Olumu Iwade Jobi says the IGP equally lauded the efforts of the police officers deployed for the polls. The IGP noted that the police officers conducted themselves professionally in a humane manner, which built trust with the electorate and ultimately led to a successful electoral process. The Inspector General of Police, while admonishing Nigerians to toe the line of peaceful conduct in forthcoming elections, assured citizens of improved management of security during electionary processes, even as it called on well-meaning Nigerians to accord necessary support to the police and other security agencies in the forthcoming 2023 general elections, including the staggered Ocean State governorship election. And despite major political parties not zoning the presidency to the southeast, the Igbo Social Cultural Group, the Ohaneze Ndigbo Elders Council, says it will not boycott the 2023 general elections. At the meeting in Abuja, the group, however, appealed for a review of the PDP constitution to reflect rotational presidency among the six geopolitical zones in subsequent elections. Timothy Yusuf tells us more. It was a seven-hour meeting held behind closed door. Members felt disappointed by the political class in the build-up to the party's primaries where major political parties failed to field Igbo candidates in the 2023 presidential election. What the delegates did was shameful. Whoever commanded them and convinced them to vote against their own people, uh, they will live with that uh, in their conscience. We are going to participate in political activities, but we are going to watch the situation and probably make comments on that. But let it be known to Nigeria that he was are going to participate in the, in the, in the, in the 2023 elections. On the state of the nation's security, the meeting condemned the recent war church attack consoling victims and prayed appropriate agencies to fish out perpetrators. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Federal Road Safety Corps Cross River State Command has a new sector commander. He is Abdullahi Maikanu Hassan, the new commander until his redeployment to Cross River Sector Command as the 21st commander was the Deputy Corps Secretary Abuja. A statement signed by the Sector Public Education Officer Mark Ajuka states that the new commander was enlisted into the Corps in 1998 and has served in various capacities, both at the unit command, 
Sector Command and the National Headquarters Abuja. We will take a break and the news continues in just a moment. Don't go away. <laughs> self-medication and drug abuse among people living with sickle cell condition, the Cross River State Government is providing free health care services through the National Health Care Insurance Scheme to the people. The Director, Medical and Dental Services in the State, Ministry of Health, Dr. Itamisian, disclosed this as part of contribution to commemorate the 2022 World Sickle Day, Cell Day in the state. The theme for this year's celebration is Stand Up, Speak Out. The Kano Ultra Modern Cancer Treatment Center is expected to take off by the end of August this year. Governor Abdullahi Umar Gandhi stated this during an inspection visit to the site of the project. Abdullahi Mustafa reports. The multi-billion Naira project started four years ago was intended to commence operation by the middle of 2021. That could, however, not be realized due to unforeseen circumstances. Now, the project is nearing completion with civil works fully executed. In less than two months to come, finishings and installation of equipment will be ready. The sensitive equipment, Your Excellency, are almost completely up, uh, around the cabinet. Processes for the recruitment of personnel would equally commence soon. I have already briefed Mr. President, Muhammad Buhari, and he has promised to be here in two months' time in order to commission this all-important project. The center would, in addition to treatment of cancer, also expected to serve research needs of tertiary health and educational institutions. In Kanu, Abdullah Mustafa, NT News. And the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Primary Health Care Development Agency have reviewed several requests from parents and guardians of teenagers who require COVID-19 vaccination for international travel and schooling abroad. Consequently, the federal government has granted special age waiver for teenagers less than 18 years to receive COVID-19 vaccines for international travels only. Any person less than 18 years required to required to be vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine for purposes of international travels and schooling will be required to show valid evidence at the vaccination site. Valid evidence include the following visa for international travels, the educational institution's admission letter, and birth certificate sworn or sworn affidavit. All COVID-19 vaccination teams are hereby required to ensure compliance with these requirements before administering COVID-19 vaccines to any person less than 18 years. We'll take another break and the news continues. <laughs> from member countries of the World Trade Organization adopted 10 decisions and declarations at the just concluded World Trade Organization 12 Ministerial Conference in Geneva, Switzerland. The report is here presented from our studio. Part of the conference outcome documents show that of 10 ministerial decisions and declarations adopted by trade ministers, 
Seven were considered and adopted by the ministerial conference, while three were considered by the general council and brought forward to the ministers for adoption. Worthy of note among the outcomes is the adoption of the 20 years outstanding agreement on fisheries subsidies. The Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Miriam Yawalji Katagu, who led the Nigerian delegation to the 12th WTO Ministerial Conference on behalf of the federal government commended the Director General, WTO, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, on the structured modalities of sections which provided members with a constructive way of engagement on the identified priority areas. Nigeria notes, among other things, WTO response to the pandemic and the agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights waiver. Food crisis, fishery subsidies, agricultural reforms, and WTO reform as ideal for LD global trade practices. This is the first ministerial conference since the appointment of Ngozi Okonjo Iweala as the Director General, World Trade Organization. And from our sports desk, Cynthia Ogun is standing by with updates. Nigeria's Golden Eaglets are set for the semi-final match against Cote d'Ivoire in the Waffle B Under-17 Championship on Tuesday at the Cape Coast Stadium in Ghana. Eaglets are unbeaten in the competition with victories against host Ghana and Togo in Group A. Burkina Faso, who are also unbeaten in the competition, will face Ghana in the other semi-final. The two finalists will feature at the Africa Under-17 Cup of Nations in Algeria next year. Still on football, Africa's soccer governing body, CAF, has announced July 21 as the date for the CAF award ceremony and Rabat, Morocco, will be the host venue. Winners in the CAF awards are decided by votes from captains and coaches of the member associations, selected journalists, CAF technical study group and CAF legends. The period under review is from September 2021 until June 2022. CAF Awards had been on suspension due to the outbreak of COVID-19 and Senegal's Sadio Mane was the last recipient of the Player of the Year Award. And finally, in athletics, the president of the Nigeria Olympic Committee, Habu Gumel, has challenged Nigerian athletes to compete clean and fair by shunning doping that can jeopardize their career and tarnish the country's image. He stated this while declaring the 2022 Nigeria Athletes Commission seminar held in Abuja. The Nigerian Athletic Commission must be up and doing in the area of educating athletes on the great, grave dangers of doping to their health, career, and our national security. The program we have um, um, the WADA doping that is extremely important for us that we talk about it. The seminar became necessary to help educate Nigerian athletes to enhance their performance and growth of sports in Nigeria. With Sports Update, Cynthia Ogun, NT News. Finally, a recap of the major stories. As civil and public servants are marking this year's Civil Service Week, workers in Cross River State are suing for Workers' Free Week to enable them get registered and get their permanent voters car. Also in the news, Federal Road Safety Corps Cross River State Command has a new sector commander. He is Abdullahi Maikanu Hassan. That's it on the news. Many thanks for watching. Do have a good night.